sun, the Holy Ghost in me. Hello everyone, welcome to another End Times 4565 video. And uh, I got a bit of a rant here. And I have a couple things I want to talk about. And one of the things I want to talk about is these big earthquakes we've had in the last few days. And in Ecuador and all this. And But I'm not going to be somebody that's going to say, Remember when I told you it was going to happen? Okay, well, I could tell you an earthquake is going to hit somewheres. And the way earthquakes are going today, it will hit there. And then I could come on and make you think how smart I am because I predicted it. Okay, that's not what I want to do. I don't want to tell you how smart I am that I could predict an earthquake. What I want you to know is what's happening with these earthquakes. This is a sign that something is going on. See, it's not just a huge earthquake. It's something is going on. Now, I've been doing some more studying and some more digging and coming up with some new information. And the first thing I want to talk about is, I want to talk about the earthquakes. And before this video is over, I'm going to take you to Earthquake 3D and show you what's happened just in the last seven days. It's off the hook. Off the hook. Now, you can call it the uh, Death Star. You can call it uh, Wormwood. You can call it Planet 10, Planet 9. You can call it anything you want to. I don't care. But the, the thing about it is, it's not for me to prove or show you pictures. It's for me to tell you, remember this guy right here. It's for me to tell you that something is definitely going on. Now, we know for a fact that the North Pole is moving. We know that it's headed into the direction of Siberia. But it doesn't matter which direction it's going in. What we do need to know is that it's moving. So a pole shift seems to be in the order of things happening. There's no doubt about it. You can find out that information. It's a fact. Now, it's not for me to predict where the North Pole is going to be on Thursday the 43rd at 19.20 o'clock. Not, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to tell you that you need to look at the facts, and that is that it is moving. Okay, and the earthquakes are on the increase. Now, let's talk about some interesting subjects. Let's talk about the uh, Mr. Krill. He's the uh, Russian uh, high priest, uh, Mr. Krill, and a Russian Orthodox guy. And uh, he met with the Pope, uh, and they met in Cuba, and they had uh, tea and crumpets. And then uh, uh, the Pope uh, gave, uh, Pope Francis gave uh, Pope Creel, Creel uh, some uh, paperwork of an ancient prayer. And, 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 and Putin gave Creel some uh, dirt from Russia and some ashes of a, somebody, some czar or something. And uh, Creel went to Antarctica. And he went to Antarctica and had a ritual, had a ritual in Antarctica. These are facts. These are facts well known. And uh, then he left. Then suddenly, some weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, there's a krill of the white garb there. He's the white garb, and then, oh, we remember her. And he's with the Pope there. And so he meets with Putin, and, and here's what he does. He tells Putin that he went to the EU and he tried to convince the EU not to put up the archway of Baal because it was a bad sign from God if they did. Well, he was unsuccessful and he didn't talk them out of it. Now, in the United States, there's a debate on whether it's been canceled or not, but a few days from now, we'll tell. At any rate, Krill then left and went home and had a meeting with uh, Vladimir Putin. And he told Putin that uh, they're going to do this, and if they do this, it's going to cause 
a tremendous uh, wrath of God situation that it's not going to be good because we, well, we don't all know, but those who study the Bible know that the prophets of Baal is God's number one enemy uh, uh, outside of Satan. Now, uh, God can't stand Baal, and he can't stand Moloch, and, and they make him angry. And all we need to do now to finish this off is to have a worship service under this archway, and that's not going to be good. So Krill told Vladimir Putin, you, you know, you need to get ready, because if they do this, it's on like a chicken bone, and there ain't no way. No way you're going to be able to stop what God's going to do. So Vladimir Putin, for the first time in all of history of Russia, has now formed the Russian National Guard to protect the country from these things that could be coming. Of course, the Pope, he tried to convince Hussein, Obama, not to do it. And I don't know, I think the Pope is pretty disgusted because he got nowhere's feel with that discussion with Hussein. Because Hussein wants these things to happen. He needs something big, something really big to happen so that he can keep this election from taking place. Now, a lot of people want Hillary Clinton to be the president. But uh, I digress. I tell you that if Hillary becomes the president, then there's one thing we know. She's not the Antichrist. <laughs> so that would be a sort of a something to think about. At any rate, Hussein wants something big to happen so that he can declare martial law, freeze the election, and freeze the Constitution. Now, whether he causes it or it's a natural cause, doesn't matter. He wants something. And so I don't know, uh, I don't really have any evidence that it was canceled, and uh, nor do I have any good evidence that it's going to happen. There are some people who are telling you where it's going to be. And, you know, that's all fine. Uh, but, you know, with a situation like this, we have to wait and see. But here's what I want to tell you. If you see it, if they start building it, if they start talking about it, ladies and gentlemen, Make no mistake about it, but the earthquake in Ecuador, that ain't nothing compared to what's going to be coming. You understand that? Now, am I predicting? Oh, yeah. I'm predicting that if we start worshiping Baal and Moloch by the end of this month, you're not going to like the retribution from the Creator. It's not going to be good. And remember, you can't stop what he's going to do. You understand? Nor can you protect yourself from something that he's going to do. So, with that being said, my last video I talked about uh, all the near-earth objects. And as I was studying why all of a sudden we have so many near-earth objects, I came across some information that I found interesting. And that is Shoemaker Levy Nine. That there, remember there was the nine impacts of Shoemaker Levy Nine into the planet Jupiter, and then there was another collision in 2007, and then we had just another collision uh, a couple of weeks ago on Jupiter. Now scientists, of course, everybody was all shouting when they were watching the collisions on Jupiter with Shoemaker Levy. The only problem with that is, five years from that time, all the debris from those collisions would be within range of the Earth. I'm just asking a question. Is it possible that all these near-Earth objects are from the impacts from Jupiter? Is it possible that we're going through a tremendous asteroid belt that was created from the Jupiter impacts. Is this why, is this why the NEOs are off the hook? Wonder why nobody wants to say 
that it's been about five years since it started happening. And uh, it's just something to think about to explain my way of explaining all these objects. And of course, if they're that new and that's what it is, who's to say what the direction of any of these objects could be? Uh, you know, they, they're not like something that they've seen. Now, they might try to tell you that they've been watching them for weeks, but uh, months, years, but they don't know. How do you know? How, how can you go into a pile of rocks and discern one rock from another? Shut up. Well, anyway, with that being said, my next thing I want to rant about is I want to rant about an astronaut, and uh, here she is here, and her name is uh, Lisa Nowak. Now, Lisa Nowak uh, was a shuttle astronaut. Now, Lisa Nowak came back from her mission and uh, had a speech that she gave in Mexico, in Mexico City. And in her speech, she made some very interesting statements. Like she said, uh, she provided proof that NASA, never a straight answer, fearing that other scientists around the world would soon discover what they did about this other object, in order to to keep the public confused and misdirected, demoted and downgraded, Pluto, she says, was going to take the fall. She said, Pluto's going to take the fall, and then Jupiter's going to take the hit. Okay, this was her prediction. Okay, Jupiter, excuse me, Pluto, take the fall. Pluto took the fall when scientists decided to demote Pluto from a planet to a dwarf star. And uh, they took it off. And the reason they did that was so that they wouldn't have to say another planet, Planet X. So in order to not name it Planet 10, they demoted Planet 9, and so now there's a new Planet 9. Uh, I know, it sounds childish, but doesn't the government usually? At any rate, this is the thing. And of course, now Jupiter is taking the hit over and over and over again. And every time there's a big impact on Jupiter, we're going to feel the pressure from the debris field. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not here to tell you that I'm about to predict an incoming asteroid, nor am I here to tell you that another earthquake is going to happen on the west coast at 40, 30, 33 on the 19th day of the sun when the moon is round. That's not what I'm telling you. I'm telling you what everybody else is telling you, that everybody already knows this, that the west coast is due. And the longer it stays silent, the closer it is to its reality. And, of course, the news is saying that people are leaving the west coast in drones. And I wonder why. Maybe they have come to realization that, you know, it's like time to get out of Dodge. Just say it. You know, I moved up here in the hills. I told my wife the other day that uh, I feel safer up here uh, in these hills in Central Texas than I do, than I have before. And it doesn't matter because should the Lord pull us out of here, this house will be empty anyway. Uh, leave it for the Antichrist. So here's what you need to know. There's lots of things going on. And this debris field is one of those things. And these earthquakes, they're one of these things. Now, I don't know if I can do this, but I'm going to try it. You know how my computer is. I got people laughing at my computer all the time. Okay, here we go. See this? This is earthquakes from the last seven days. Last seven days. Seems to go faster. Last seven days. Every line, every circle is just seven days. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't look at this earthquake 3D 
and go, well, this is normal. No, ladies and gentlemen, this is not normal. It is, however, prophesied, but it isn't normal. And the reason why it isn't normal, ladies and gentlemen, is because something, something, I would say, magnetically is messing with the earth, magnetic field, which is causing drastic shifts in the tectonic plates. The more it roars, the more it's going to rumble. You understand that? Is it going to slow down? No, I don't think it's going to slow down. I think it's going to continue to build until the crescendo. What is a crescendo? I don't know. It could be Yellowstone. It could be a super volcano in Indonesia. I don't know what it's going to be. But it's going to be something. And when that crescendo happens, before November, okay, Hussein is going to be sitting in the driver's seat. You understand that? You're not going to have no say-so. No say-so. No say-so. And if you're not prepared, then you're going to be unprepared. Oh, look, I'm a prophet. Whoa. If you're not prepared, you're going to get caught with your pants down, and you ain't going to like that. So you better start thinking about it. Well, I think it's all a bunch of stuff. It don't matter what you think it is. Don't you? You know, why do you carry a spare tire in your car? Because you think you're going to have a flat? No, in case you have a flat. You know what I mean? You go on a big trip, you carry a small toolbox. Why? Because you might break down and be able to fix it. I mean, that's what I do. So knowing that all this stuff is coming, don't you think you should be ready? Make a plan. Look out, look out, look out. Don't get caught blindsided. Because what you're seeing here on Earthquake 3D is real. Only the beginning of the end. 2,000 years ago, God made a way for each and every one of us. And if you don't choose that direction, then you're going to go without Him. And you don't want to play that. So without a bunch of large, long words simply stated here, Receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Do it now. Because when it's too late, it'll be too late. It's not like, oh, it's too late and in an hour you get another chance. No, there won't be a second chance. This is your chance. Right now. This time here. Take my word for it. I may not be able to predict an earthquake or the next meteorite impact. But I guarantee you the Bible says I can know the seasons. And I can read the signs. I can see what's coming. Can you? Look out, look out. Look out. Don't be caught unaware.